Hey guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to see how to write our first Docker file. If you follow this video completely, I am quite confident that you can able to write a Docker file. Before talking about a Docker file, we should know how a container get create. Usually, container gets creates from a Docker image. If we have a Docker image on our local system, we can just execute a command called Docker build so that we can create a container. And if we need any changes to this Docker container, we can directly do it on Docker container. However, if this container terminates, we are going to lose all our changes. That is the reason it is not recommended to do the changes. Then where we can do the changes? Before discussing that one, how we can get this Docker image? Let's see that one. We can get this Docker image or we can create this Docker image in two ways. First thing is we can pull it from the Docker hub by using a docker pull command. Another thing is we can create a docker file. We can build it with the command called docker build to create a docker image. This is another way. Now if we need any customization to the existing container then we need to update those changes in the docker file rather than updating directly onto the container. If we update those changes in a docker file those are permanent and uh, those permanent changes will get affected in the docker image which we create out of this. That's why we will write docker files to customize our containers. In real world most of the cases we use the customized images itself. Now we would like to write our first docker file right? Of course for that we need to know few instructions which are quite commonly used in the docker file. I will quickly run through with the instructions which we commonly use to write a docker file so that it will be very easy for us to write any docker file. First thing is from. It helps to pull the base image because most of the docker files build based out of a base image. Next thing run to execute commands. In case if we want to execute any Linux commands as it is then we can use the run instruction. Next cmd to provide defaults for an executing container. In case if we want to run some commands during the execution time we can use the cmd but the command whatever we mention in the cmd can be replaceable. Next entry point. This is also similar to cmd but cmd command can be replaceable but entry point command cannot be replaceable. If you want to know more details about the CMD and entry point, I would request you to comment in the comment section so that I can create a dedicated video with the detailed explanation with examples. Next thing work dir to set the working directory. It is kind of a CD, nothing but in which directory you wish to work. Next copy to copy a directory or file from your local mission to Docker container. By using this one, we can copy files from our Docker host, nothing but where we host our Docker container from that system to inside a Docker container. Next add command. This is also similar to copy command. We can copy files from our local mission to container. However, add also helps us to download packages from the URLs like uh, if we want to download packages from the git or Tomcat website or some other website, we can use add command. Next expose. Once we have created our container, our application might be listening on some port, right? That port we can export by using the expose command so that Docker can able to send the traffic on that port. Next thing env, nothing but environment variables. If we wish to set up some environment variables, we can use this one. With the help of these commands, let's create a Docker file. Now I would like to create a docker file which should install tomcat on top of CentOS. That is my problem statement. For this we need to follow some instructions. If you are already new how to create a tomcat on a VM, it is similar kind of activity. If you don't know, I have already created videos for that. Just go through with that one for fair understanding. Now to install tomcat on CentOS, instructions will go like this. First we need to pull the base OS from the docker hub. Docker hub is a repository for images. We can pull docker images from the docker hub. Here I am going to pull the sent OS first. Once sent OS is available then to install Tomcat we need to install Java. So second step I am going to install Java. Once Java installed 
we should download tomcat for that we can create a dedicated directory so here we are going to create slash opt tomcat directory once a directory is created we need to work inside a directory that's why we need to switch on to directory so change work directory once we are inside a directory we can download the packages so we should download tomcat packages tomcat packages comes with the tar.gz extension so once it is downloaded, we need to extract those. After extraction, we will get alphanumeric directory. If we want to make it as a more understandable directory name, maybe we can rename it to the Tomcat directory. Once rename is happened, we need to tell that on which port number our Tomcat is running. So Tomcat by default runs on port number 8080. Once it is exposed, we need to start our Tomcat services. These are the steps we should follow. Now let's try to convert these into the instructions which we need to use while creating a Docker file. Let's again go back to top. So first step is pull sent wires from Docker Hub. To pull the image, of course we are going to use the from instruction. Next we would like to install Java. It is a straightforward Linux command. So if we wish to use Linux command directly, then we can use run. Next, create a opt tomcat directory. Again, it is a Linux command. Then run command we can use. Now, I would like to change my directory to slash opt tomcat. For that, we can use a instruction called work dir. Now, I would like to download packages. To download packages, we can use a run command or else a add command. So, by using add, we can download the packages. Even by using run also, we can download. Next, we need to extract it. It is a tar command we should execute. So to execute Linux command again, we can use run command. Now I would like to rename or move the content from the alphanumeric directory to tomcat directory. For that we can use run command. Next we need to tell to docker that on which port number it is running. That is where expose comes into picture. Next we need to start our services. To start our services we can use the cmd. So these are the respective instructions which we can use while creating our docker file. Now I will log into my docker host and create a docker file. Currently I have logged into my docker host system and uh, I don't have any images or containers at this moment. And if you see here, I don't have any docker file over here. There is a webapp.var file. We are going to use this one later point of time. But to create a docker file, we need to use va docker file. Okay, and for better understanding, I will bring the instructions over here. You can see here, these are the instructions we should follow, right? So, first thing is from nothing but we want to take the base OS that is from sent OS colon latest. Okay, even without latest, also it will work. Next thing, we would like to install Java for that. We can use run yum install java minus y. Okay. Next thing, we would like to create a directory for that we can use run mkdir slash opt tomcat. This creates a directory. Next, we would like to change the directory to slash opt tomcat for that work dir slash opt tomcat. Okay. From now onwards, whatever instructions we execute that runs from the slash opt tomcat. Now I would like to download the packages for that we can use a add or else we can use the run. If we use run wget and url we can give. Okay. Where is the tomcat files are exist. But in this case I want to use add instruction. So add and I should get the url. Now let's get the url. So if you search for tomcat download you will get a tomcat, tomcat 9 software download. We can open it and scroll down. So take the copy link URL of tar.gz and come back to our console and copy it. And we need to tell that on which location it should get copy. I can mention opt tomcat. However, we are already in this directory. We can just give dot as well. Okay. Once we have downloaded packages, we need to extract it. To extract, we should run again run command run tar minus xvzf and the file name. So it will download the file name as this, right? Apache Tomcat and version with tar.gz. Once it is extracted, we need to rename the directory. That is what we are saying. So to rename, again, we can use run. Either MV I can use or I can copy the content onto slash 
tomcat so i will just move the content of this directory because once it is extracted you will get a directory from this directory to slash opt tomcat i am just moving the content once we have copied content we need to tell to on which port number our tomcat is running that is 8080 right at last we need to start the services and uh, we can start tomcat services by using the catalina.sh that is the script file in case on vm we were using startup.sh right similar way we need to use catalina.sh for that we can use cmd and this should be in the braces okay and here we need to tell that where this catalina.sh is exist that is available under opt tomcat why because that is where our tomcat packages we have downloaded in this we have a directory called bin in that catalina.sh this is the script and we would like to run it so we need to mention it as a run now i can say that i have created a docker file which can pull sent os image from the docker hub and do the tomcat installation let me save this file and if you see docker file yes we have docker file now let's create a image out of it so far we don't have any images now to create a image docker build and name of the image that is with minus t tag we can give so name i am giving my tomcat and dot dot nothing but in current location there is a docker file okay if it doesn't find a docker file it cannot able to create it in case this docker file is in some other location then we can use minus f path of the docker file then dot that is how we need to give but uh, in current location we have docker file just create it so what does it do it is pulling the sent OS, and next it is going to install java next once java is installed it creates directory called slash opt tomcat and go inside to directory and download packages so for java installation is completed it running next steps extracted and moved the file and successfully exposed let me clear the screen docker images you can see a latest image my tomcat has been created 10 seconds ago and it pulls the base OS that is sent OS. now i would like to create a container out of it for that docker run and minus d nothing but a detached mode minus minus name so demo container i am giving and uh, on which port number we would like to expose it so we have exposed our application only onto docker host so far from docker host if we want to expose to external network that is where minus p option we should use so i would like to run it on port number 8081 externally and internally it should go and communicate to 8080 now what happens whenever we request to the docker host on port number 8080 it gives to the docker and the docker respond on port number 8080 and what is the image that is my tomcat so create a container now if i look for docker ps minus a okay we have one running container up from six seconds and it is running on port number 8081 i have already opened this port number in the security group of our ec2 instance so you can see here 8081 this is the security group tab and this is the system i am using to host my application so i need to take the public ip of this system docker host public ip colon 8081 right it is running on 8081 all right we could able to access our tomcat web page now i would like to host some application on this one that is where i am going to use our var file okay here we have a var file right this i would like to combine with my docker image so that is how i would like to do the customization for that i am opening this file again and i would like to copy the var file onto my image for that just we need to add one more instruction so copy so where is our var file it is in current location web app dot var okay this is the file name and we would like to copy it onto our tomcat directory right it is opt tomcat under this we have web apps okay in this directory we should copy any var files okay that is done and now if we create a container again 
it won't get affected why because we have updated docker file so we should create a new image then only it will take the var file or else we can manually copy this one onto the running container in case this container get terminates we cannot able to access the application right so now i will recreate the image so image name i am going to use the same thing so docker build minus t my tomcat this time quite quicker why because it is already having existing layers i mean to say we have executed it already that is the reason it is faster and a new image has been created and the latest image got the my tomcat and previous one tag has been removed now we need to create a container but you cannot use the same command to create a container why because our container is already running with this name and we cannot use the same name for two containers so that is the reason we need to name this container so i will just give demo tomcat and ip also you cannot use because this port number is already in use so i will give 8082 and let's execute it now let me clear the screen docker ps minus a now we have one more container up and running from seven seconds and go back here instead of accessing it on port number 8081 i'm accessing port number 8082 both will be working and uh, our application if we want to access we need to give slash web app all right you can see here we could able to access our application successfully just to, to validate i will just stop this container docker stop and this container okay if we stop it of course we could not able to access the application why because the container is down all right so this is how we can create our docker file if we understand how it works on a vm it is quite easy for us to write a docker file hope this helps you to write further more docker files if you feel that this video is helping you then please like and share with others Thank you and see you in the next video.